This conference will now be recorded. Welcome to another IRIS webinar. Our topic uh, today is uh, the successful mobility as a service business model. And uh, the webinar concerns the business model of the mobility as a service demonstration that implementing in Gothenburg and the experiences which derives from the implementation and the analysis of the results. The webinar has three parts. In the beginning, uh, Jose Maria Salanova from CERT's Institute of Transport will introduce you to the IRIS project and especially to Transition Track uh, 3, which is related to intelligent mobility solutions. After this short introduction, Emma Lud and Bjorn Wedl from Trivector will present the mobility as a service demonstration in Gothenburg. And uh, in the end, as we do every time, we will have a questions and answer session with a discussion on the, on the topic. So our first presenter, Jose Maria Salanova from Hellenic Institute of Transport, will make a short presentation about IRIS and especially Transition Track 3. Thank you, Panayoti. So, uh, I am sharing the presentation. Can you see it? So, sir, uh, we can speak you very loudly. It's, uh... Ah, yeah, yeah. So, sorry. Uh, hello, uh, I am Jose Maria from CERF, and uh, I will give you a brief introduction of uh, the IRIS project. I understand that you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, so as Panayoti already mentioned, uh, we will talk about uh, successful implementation of a mass scheme uh, within the IRIS project, mostly focusing on the business model and less on, on, on the technical uh, part. So uh, this webinar is part of the knowledge exchange, exchange activities between the Lighthouse cities in the project and the follower cities. Here you have a brief overview of uh, the next hour, hour and a half. Uh, we will have an introduction to IRIS and the transition track 3 within the project, which is dealing with smart e mobility. Uh, more in detail into the solutions that we are testing in the project uh, related to mobility. Then uh, I will give the floor to uh, Emma. Uh, from uh, they will present uh, the solution that they uh, have implemented in uh, Gothenburg uh, within the IRIS project. Uh, with a background about the Swedish context and how this uh, solution was implemented in, in the city. Uh, what is the concept? Is it to be? And how it was implemented? Focusing on the business model, which is really interesting and it's, I think it's a good, uh, good practice, a lesson learned for other cities. Then we'll go into details about uh, the demonstration. The demonstration uh, demonstrator one uh, we will have some uh, first monitoring of the results of the implementation in uh, the Biba uh, uh, district as well as lessons learned from the implementation and the demonstrator two will have a, uh, where we have a live version of the ec 2 b service in uh, another area so we will see how we can uh, transfer one good practice from one area to another area uh, what are the activities planned? And then we will have uh, 20, 30 minutes for any question from the audience to any of the presenters, which we will try to answer uh, to the best of our knowledge. So, <laughs> about the IRIS project. Uh, the IRIS project is a five year European funded project in which uh, all the partners of the cities uh, are, developing, are developing user demand driven energy and mobility services. This is important. We are putting together energy and mobility, but uh, also the citizens in the loop. So all these three pillars are the basis for uh, the services we are uh, providing in the project. Of course, uh, the background is ICT. We need also uh, ICT to connect all these different elements in the project. A way to uh, have a more collaborative uh, and effective uh, urban planning and governments, so how, how the cities can implement solutions combining ICT, energy, and mobility, taking into account the citizens, 
to have at the end of the day a better life for, uh, for, for themselves. And it's important to validate what are the business models, how we can support economically these uh, innovations, but also uh, what are the technical innovations we, we are having in, in the project. So, uh, a brief uh, introduction to the cities. We have uh, three lighthouse cities, Gothenburg, Utrecht, and Nice. Uh, today we will talk about Gothenburg. And we have four follower cities, uh, Bassa, Foxani, Alexandropolis, and Santa Cruz de, de Benedict. In addition, we have a strong player of cities, which are uh, following the project, that observe the cities, and they are also interested in how to, how to accelerate or transplant the results from, from the project. So uh, these are the five challenges that I already introduced. Uh, we are clustering them into five categories. Mm -hmm. And at the, at, uh, in total, we have 16 uh, innovative solutions. Uh, IRIS project aims to create uh, and apply bankable solutions. Uh, for challenge that the cities have identified themselves. We are answering to a need of the cities by providing them this set of, of solutions. We aim to demonstrate and validate these solutions, how they can be uh, integrated in, 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 within the project to reduce technical and financial risks for the city, uh, giving confidence to uh, anyone willing to invest in them. We are working on the business models, strong business models, so we can accelerate the uh, successful take up of these solutions in the whole cities. So during these five years of the project, I think uh, we are uh, next to uh, the mid part of the project. Uh, we're in the second year. So during these five years, uh, we will uh, work with user demand driven energy and mobility services in the six cents. Uh, encourage them in uh, being more collaborative and uh, support effective urban planning and governance at city level and uh, validate all these services, all these aspects in uh, two different business models that will be appealing for the investors. And this is the focus of the discussion we will have today, how a business model for mobility service can be applied, can take advantage of some parking policy of, of the city to uh, make more appealing to apply uh, this kind of factors. So uh, going uh, into detail into transition track three, which this deals with uh, smart e mobility, uh, we are having two uh, main uh, streams. The first one is vehicle to grid and smart solar charging. So it's dealing with a new kind of energy for uh, fueling the vehicles in the city in either car sharing, neither buses, neither bicycles, or these vehicles are being uh, charged by a solar and uh, clean energies. The second one is uh, a set of innovative mobility services, which the cities have identified that uh, I want to implement these services. I can see the benefit out of the services. But since they are new services, uh, we are needing some business how to make them work. So uh, at the end, these two streams, they are complementary because uh, if you have in mind a car sharing uh, service by electric vehicles, uh, the first stream is dealing with the electromobility part, how to charge the vehicles, while the second stream is dealing with uh, the operation of the car sharing services. Uh, and car sharing indeed, is a small part of uh, a larger, broader service, which is mobility as a service. So basically, uh, with regards to mobility in the project, we are dealing with electromobility, car sharing, and mobility as a service. One of the objectives, uh, first of all, to increase, increase the use of uh, renewable energies in the mobility sector by means of electric vehicles, to increase the use of car sharing systems. We are analyzing how different operation schemes of this service uh, will have uh, a better penetration and uh, use of uh, these cars. Again, talking about the business model because we want to provide a business model that is interesting for anyone willing to invest into a car sharing fleet and to operate it in the cities. 
And finally, and which is uh, the, the topic of today, promoting mobility as a service. So at the end of the day, we want to reduce the use of private vehicles by uh, giving a set of mobility services that anyone can use uh, as part of a, a seamless door-to-door -door experience uh, on a daily, a daily travel. So after this introduction to IDIS, the mobility part of IDIS, I will give the floor to Emma. He has more uh, details about how MAS uh, has been and is being still implemented in Europe. Okay, thank you, Jose. Emma, I made you, I made you a presenter. Okay, thank you. Uh, I will share our present presentation. Okay, we try once more. <laughs> okay. Okay, it does seem to work now. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, so uh, we will present to you today what, what uh, Jose just introduced. Uh, my name is Emma Lund. I'm the task leader of task 7.5 in the IRIS project. So the, the demonstration of the easy to be concept uh, in two different settings in Gothenburg. Uh, and we will present mainly today about uh, the demonstrator, the demonstrator one, which is uh, the implementation of easy to be uh, in a, a housing association. Uh, and uh, also mention briefly the demonstrator two, which hasn't been implemented yet. Uh, and with me today, I have my colleague Björn. Yes, Björn Wendler is my name. I'm the CEO of uh, easy to be Mobility. And easy to be Mobility is actually a, a daughter company or an internal startup at Savector. So easy to be is not as, is, as a, a, a partner of uh, Iris, but through easy to be, through Savector, we are part of the project. Yes. Uh, and uh, in these two demonstrators, we could collaborate uh, with a lot of partners in Gothenburg. Uh, some of them are, are partners to the Irish project and some are not. Uh, so in demonstrator one, we have a very close collaboration with Riksbyggen, which is uh, the property developer. Uh, and in demonstrator two, we have a collaboration uh, with Johanne Weiss Science Park. Uh, HSB, which is a property company, and also um, Akademiska Hus, which is another property company uh, responsible for the buildings for the university, where we will do the second demonstrator. Uh, we have the city of Gothenburg, who are not, they're a partner to the IRIS project, but they don't have time to work uh, in, this, uh, in this task. But uh, they, of course, provide the setting for the demonstrators. Uh, and then we have Smart Resonair, which is our uh, technology provider, uh, uh, which we have uh, uh, procured to perform some services within the Irish project, but they're not par partners of the project. Uh, and then we have Chalmers Fastigheter, uh, who is also not part of the Irish project, but is an Im other important uh, property actor uh, at the campus area. So we are collaborating with them as well. Uh, for demonstrator two. So that is the local team. Uh, just to give you some background on, on uh, uh, the easy to be concept, why did we uh, come up with this innovation from the start? Well, part of the background is that building parking is very, very expensive. It's actually so expensive, no one is really expected to pay the full cost. Uh, building multi-story parking could cost something between 10 and 20,000 euro uh, for one, just for one parking lot. Uh, and if you were to pay uh, the true cost for that, that would uh, cost you somewhere between 150 and 200 euro a month. Uh, and if you build an underground garage, uh, that would cost somewhere between 20 and 50,000 euro a lot. Or if you, as a customer, were to pay the full cost, you would pay between 250 and 450 euro a month. Uh, but no one is prepared to pay that cost uh, for 
for a parking lot or a garage. Uh, so instead, uh, other people living in the same building will actually sponsor <laughs> the, the people that use the garage uh, or the parking lots. And the, the, at least in the Swedish context, a customer will pay maybe around 70 to 80 euro a month for a parking, uh, parking lot. And then uh, another part of the background is that a car, at least in the Swedish context, but this is similar uh, around Europe, is used just a tiny bit of its time. Uh, we have calculated that a Swedish car is used maybe three to four percent of time which means that we have a lot of cars that are just parked and, and, and not used. Uh, so we see that there is really a potential to use cars more efficiently. Uh, and in Sweden, during the last 10 years maybe, uh, more and more municipalities have started working with something that they call flexible parking norms. Uh, normally, uh, a municipality would have a parking norm which requires when you build a new house that you provide a sufficient number of parking lots for the cars that you can expect uh, to, if, if it's accommodation, uh, the people living there will normally have cars. So you, you need to be able to park them somewhere. Uh, and the same if, if it is uh, a house with uh, uh, workplaces, you also need uh, parking lots. Uh, but as many municipalities now want to reduce car traffic in the city, they are looking into other ways of, of uh, 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 other ways to reduce the number of cars in the city. Uh, and flexible parking norms could be one way of doing this. Uh, and the concept allows uh, the property developers to reduce the number of parking lots and instead providing other mobility measures. And this could be car sharing schemes for the tenants. This has been the most common concept in Sweden so far and has been going on for about 10 years. Uh, so you, can, you're, you are allowed to reduce the number of parking lots that you provide to the tenants if you instead uh, put up a car sharing scheme for the tenants and uh, uh, allocate parking lots for uh, the, the shared cars uh, in the parking and also maybe pay for the, the membership fee for the tenants in the car sharing scheme. Uh, then uh, over time, more municipalities have started uh, extending this concept. So you can also use other, other measures such as giving access to shared bikes, maybe cargo bikes uh, in connection to the, to the building. Uh, you can provide rebates on public transport uh, free bicycle service, things like that. Uh, but there has also been a growing interest in mobility as a service, uh, as one way uh, of providing these alternative mobility measures. Uh, and this is what uh, started our interest in the concept. And we saw that there was a need for someone to take the role to put all these measures together and, and help uh, the property developers out uh, also uh, having contact with the municipality because uh, most property developers are not specialized uh, in mobility. So they need uh, our help as a consultant. Uh, I wanted to share with you one example of, of how such parking requirements can be formulated. And this is from Gothenburg uh, where we are doing our demonstrators. Uh, so the normal parking requirements in def depend on the type of district. Uh, so in the city centre, uh, the, the, the municipality requires somewhere between 0 0.2 and 0 0.5 parking lots per apartment. This is in the, in the very dense city centre where with very good access to, to uh, public transport and so on. And then in, in new development areas, uh, not in the outskirts of the city, but not in the very city centre, uh, the requirement is somewhere between 0 0.3 and 0 0.6 parking lots per apartment. And in other areas, m more at the outskirts of the city, the requirement is higher, it's between 0 0.4 and 1 parking lot per, per apartment. But uh, these numbers depend on the accessibility 
such as uh, the availability of public transport, if there is good bicycle infrastructure and so on. It also depends on the size of apartments. So if, the, if you build a new house with many large apartments, you will, uh, the municipality will require more parking lots than if you build small, uh, small apartments. Uh, but then, uh, which is interesting, is that uh, if you implement other mobility measures, such as car sharing, cargo bikes, mobility as a service, et cetera, you will be allowed to reduce uh, the parking requirements even further. Uh, and this example uh, is from 2018, so it's quite new. And this is what is, uh, what is valid in Gothenburg right now. Okay, so I leave the word to Björn to present a bit about the easy to be concept. Mm -hmm. Yes, and as Emma said, we developed easy to be and set up this uh, startup company as a way to meet this the need for mobility service in housing projects in Sweden. We saw the interest both from municipalities and from uh, real estate developers. So it's to be is about uh, making it making it easy to live without your own car. So have access to different mobility services as easy as possible. That's easy to be the first version. But of course, this is also about mobility and transportation. So it's, it's also about, of course, taking people from A to B in an easy way. But it's, it's both. It's about your, your everyday life as a whole and, and about transportation. And we used to say that there are three different components of A to B. The first are these kind of packages of mobility services, as um, uh, Emma has told you about car sharing, taxi, bicycles, public transport, of course. And to put this together and to, to help people get access to, to all these services that are included. Uh, and, and which services that are included can depend on the local circumstances and the interest from the real estate developer. Um, also, on the if you is the, if there is some some kind of a lifestyle concept in the housing project that could require special uh, kind of mobility services. We are also now looking into like electric scooters and that kind of services to add that on. Um, but it very much also about helping people start using these kind of services because. We have seen before, and from the projects that had added car sharing for quite a long time, that it, it, it's a very slow start, and it takes years before the people living in the house actually using these services as much as they want, uh, or so much that, is, that it could start to use private, car, uh, private cars and the need for private car parking. So we put a lot of effort to help people, help people uh, start using these kind of services. And we will have some examples further on how we do that. And it's also about being part of this to be community. We want the people living in the house also to, to be much involved, uh, both in development, but also uh, over time. So we try to do different activities to make them part of the development and part of the service. And for example, they, we want people, we want to stimulate them to, to help their neighbors, to take part in different uh, groups. But also we are looking into the possibility of, not in, in this demonstration, but in other projects, to add like peer-to-peer -peer car uh, sharing when you can rent out your car to, to a neighbor and such things. That's part of the community component. component. So it's to be, it's of course, is about the users, the people living in the house and to give them this alternative to owning a, their own car and also enabling the more sustainable lifestyle that we know that some people really want uh, and they are, of course, very, very important. But for us, 
these property developers, the real estate developers, are like our first customer when we start a new project. They are the ones that are paying for setting up the mobility services to add on the car sharing pool and to give us the possibility to, to work with education and uh, information and all this counseling and coaching. And they, they uh, through adding this kind of concept to the project, they can provide less car parking. We also want to make, help the transport operators or the mobility service operators to a bigger market to attract new customers. And we have seen so far that when we work with the customers as much as we do, helping them with, with the coaching, they will also become uh, more frequent users of the services. And that have a, a value for them, of course. And of course, also the cities that we work in, in Gothenburg, in this case, uh, they have these kind of goals around sustainable development, fewer cars and more sustainable land use. And we can do this uh, service, help them to achieve that. And when it comes to money, our business model and the transactions how, uh, and how we get this uh, system work uh, financially, we, we want to, and we are getting uh, fees and money from, maybe not from the cities, but all the others. The users that pay for some of the services they use. The property developer pay for us setting up the concept and for example, for the membership in the car sharing uh, club uh, and for the, for the coaching and support we are giving. And we have uh, also a kickback model for the transport operators. If they help them to a bigger market, they have to share some of the uh, income with us. Okay, so then we'll go a little bit more into detail uh, about the demonstrators. Uh, in BRF Viva, uh, BRF means housing association, that is a Swedish concept where uh, when uh, you, you buy a part of, of the big house, uh, and then uh, you, uh, you collaborate with your neighbors uh, to, uh, you, you pay together for, for all uh, the different services connected to the house. Uh, and this housing association is quite big. It has 132 apartments. Uh, and you can see uh, you have three uh, large houses and three a bit smaller houses uh, allocated uh, in an area which is not in the very city center, you can see the city center of Gothenburg over here, uh, but it's qu still quite centrally located. Uh, and uh, Viva is a car free housing with zero parking lots for private cars. Uh, there are, of course, parking lots for some car sharing cars uh, and also some guest parking. Uh, but no one uh, can live in Viva and have a parking lot of their own. Uh, in a, a garage uh, or parking connected to Viva. Uh, and uh, Viva is special in many ways and has won several awards for its uh, innovative housing development. Uh, and uh, there are other demonstrators within the Iris project as well connected to energy uh, storage and so on, which we will not go into de uh, detail about here. Uh, but. Uh, uh, tenants started moving in in Viva in uh, December 2018, uh, and then they moved in in three different at three different points of time. And the last tenants moved in in May 2019, so last last year. Uh, and the ECDB service was launched in March 2019, when some of the tenants had already moved in and some had not yet. Uh, and the tenants in Viva, they have access to a di digital service, an app that they can download into that uh, smartphone where they can book the shared cars and bikes, they can pay for, for these services and they can also purchase public transport tickets. Uh, and this app has been developed in collaboration with our uh, uh, partner, Smart Resonar. 
Uh, and in addition to the uh, to the app, uh, the tenants in Viva have access to uh, five electric bikes, three also electric cargo bikes, and for a for a period of time, they also had access to a ZB, which is a small uh, a light e vehicle, uh, but it wasn't used very much. And they have access to public transport. There in Gothenburg, uh, there is a lot of trams. Uh, and there are several tram stops uh, in the area and there are also two bus lines within walking distance. Uh, they have access to car sharing uh, with four electric cars, Renault, Renault Zoe, um, and they also have access to other cars within walking distance. Uh, there is also infrastructure uh, in the house where you have a big uh, bicycle garage with very easy access. Uh, there are charging facilities for the electric bikes. There is a bike workshop and a washing station that uh, tenants can use. Uh, and then as part of the concept, as Bjorn already mentioned, uh, information or uh, mobility coaching is a very important part. So there have been information meetings, individual counseling, and also there's a support function uh, where they can, can call uh, if they have any questions uh, or problems. Uh, so, what have we learned? Well, the the e-bikes, uh, the regular regular e-bikes are used nearly every day. Uh, some people use them very often, even for commuting. Uh, the cargo bikes are used uh, mostly during weekends uh, for errands, grocery shopping, but also uh, just get out, bring the kids to go uh, on a picnic and things like that. Uh, the ZB, which you can see uh, at the bottom of the of the, uh, of the slide, uh, was used mostly during weekends, especially when rainy. <laughs> uh, the, the booking rules are very generous. Uh, it doesn't uh, for booking the bikes. It doesn't cost the tenants anything, uh, and there is a good availability. Uh, there are almost always bikes available, but they are used a lot. Uh, and this also means that the bikes, they need quite a lot of service. Uh, so it's, the tenants doesn't, uh, they don't pay anything, uh, but the pay for, uh, uh, for the service of the bikes. Uh, and uh, as they're used a lot, they need a lot of service. Uh, they also have access to public transport uh, and easy to be in, in Viva was the first mobility as a service pilot in Sweden to include the sale of di digital public transport tickets in, uh, in an app, which we, we, we are of course are very proud of. Uh, and together with uh, Vestrafik, the local public transport provider, we, uh, Vestrafik normally uh, send out when people move uh, they get an offer from, from Vestrafik that they can uh, try public transport for two weeks uh, for free. Uh, and we had a collaboration with Vestrafik so that the people that moved into Viva, they got access to this offer within the easy to be app, uh, which was used by money. Uh, we have also made some temporal rebates on public transport tickets to stimulate use of, uh, of the uh, public transport tickets, uh, tickets in the app. But still we have had, uh, during uh, the weeks when we had a rebate, some people started buying tickets there. Uh, but then after this stopped, uh, we have a quite low usage of this functionality. It's, we have found that it is difficult to compete with a public transport operator's own application because they have, uh, they have a, a, a permanent, permanent rebate system that we can't compete with. When it comes to car sharing, uh, we have four electric cars, Renault Zoe, as I mentioned, from Sunfleet so far, but uh, we are now in the process of changing a uh, car sharing company because Sunfleet are uh, uh, rearranging their services in Sweden and so we we don't really know what will happen but there will still be uh, car sharing with electric cars. Uh, the membership of the car sharing scheme is included in the rent of apartments uh, which is common uh, as I mentioned before uh, and 80% of the apartments have activated the, their membership 
in this uh, car sharing scheme, which can be compared to in other, other projects uh, where uh, the property developer has used this opportunity to reduce the number of parking lots uh, and providing uh, a car sharing service instead. Normally 30 to 40 percent uh, of apartments do activate their membership. So this is very high for Viva. Uh, the tenants make about 70 percent of their bookings in the Viva pool, uh, which means that they make 30 percent on other cars, which probably reflects their needs for other car types, larger cars, uh, better cargo possibilities and uh, uh, a longer range. Uh, but on the other hand, the cars at Viva are also used by others because it's an open uh, car sharing pool. Uh, and the cars at Viva are Sunfleet's only e-cars in the neighborhood. So they have been very popular also among other users. Uh, to mention a little bit about the mobility coaching concept, uh, what we did was that we participated in three more general introductory meetings before people were moving in. So we were there and explained a little bit about uh, the mobility concept and what they could expect moving into Viva. And then upon people moving in, in at three different points in time, we had mobility evenings uh, where we invited everyone that moved in to come uh, have a chat with us. We presented the different services included. They had the opportunity to ask questions, to register for the services, try the, the vehicles, the e-bikes and cargo bikes and so on. And uh, about 40% of tenants participated in these info gatherings. Uh, we also offered individual or personal coaching sessions, which 18 people uh, used. Uh, and we had another 30 coaching sessions over the telephone, where we, tenants uh, discussed with us their travel habits. Uh, they could ask questions about the ECDB app, the shared, shared vehicles, insurance issues, and so on. Uh, and our experience was that this was very helpful uh, for the tenants, but it was also important for us to get feedback and get to know our customers. So, the lessons learned so far. Yes. And we can probably talk about this for a long time, but uh, try to put some bullets down. And as we experienced it in this demonstration, demonstration is that this concept of mobility service is, is new for everyone, the tenants, for the property developers, for the municipalities, service providers, platform providers, and also for us. So a lot of things are we doing for the first time and we have to find a way forward. So it makes uh, both interesting but also sometimes a bit difficult to find uh, the solutions for all the uh, challenges that are we are, we are seeing. Uh, we can also see that the use of shared services is higher in this project in, in Viva than in other more ordinary developments. So to that extent, we this is uh, a success. Or is it, it, it is behoved. Uh, and the concept of built-in service is appreciated by many of the users. Uh, we have uh, some uh, questionnaires and so, and got that feedback. But of course it doesn't suit everyone. For example, if you are a, a cyclist and you have a private uh, bike you use almost every day, it, it doesn't make much uh, value for you that we have added all these kind of services to the, to the house. But so, so not everyone will become a customer, but still they seem to be uh, proud of living in this house and they think it's a good idea to remove the cars and have the services instead. Uh, we have a low car ownership, but it's not, it, it's not zero. We have some people living in the house still own, owning cars, but they keep them somewhere else, somewhere else in the city. At, uh, uh, maybe a, on a place where some other part of the family is living uh, and, or uh, relatives. Some have them close to the, to the working 
working place and someone uh, some of them are renting free car parkings in the surroundings in the neighborhood we also found out that this change the behavior change will take some time we thought maybe that moving into this new house will make uh, many people take this decision to, to to don't have a private car immediately or at once when moving in but the case is that's not what really happens so we have some people doing that they decided to, to sell the car and didn't bring it with them to viva but we also have some people saying that we will see that this is working for us and if it does we will sell the car so it will take some time we have to follow this for more months to see what the end result will be. Uh, we think that it's also important to have the capacity and the possibility to handle many uncertainties underway because it's so, a lot of things happening during the way. For example, now we have to, to change the provider of the car sharing uh, cars because uh, things happened to that market or to that brand so we have to to make a change uh, and if I, I talk to, to municipalities it's also important that the actors in this kind of system have also the possibility to change over time because this is a, a market that is in, in um, fast changing, changing and uh, there's a transformation that not all the services we want to see is there today, but we we'll maybe be there tomorrow and we can add it on. And of course, we have learned a lot about how to set up and run a mass concept uh, in this demonstrator, and we will take that uh, with us when we now is going to the demonstrator number two that Emma will tell you about soon. But we are also setting up this kind of projects in other cities in Sweden. So for example, there will be another house of this kind in, in Lund, in southern Sweden, and people will move into that house uh, in November this year. And then we will set up the is to be services for them. Some recommendations, and this is maybe mostly for municipalities and the public actors. Uh, to, to learn from, from our example is that we think that zero parking accommodation can contribute significantly to more sustainable cities. But as I said before, the number of car park in the cars are not zero. So they will have to have reasonable uh, expectations. A zero vision is very difficult to reach. Um, and mobility service, as we see it, is not just more services. It's also about this coordination, packaging, and about uh, conceptual thinking to increase the potential. But it, it doesn't happen without an effort. You can just don't add more services. You also have to work on the packaging and on and information and communication. The mobility coaching is very important, we still think that, uh, and many users need this introduction and also the opportunity to, to try out different services and, and uh, be uh, aware of, of the vehicles and so on. Not all services that, that is out there are, are really good or sustainable or have a high quality, so if you are in the position to, to uh, to demand things and to set up the requirements. I think it's, it's important to think also about quality and sustainability indicators and parameters, uh, because not, not everything will be uh, good services. And we also think it is important to support the scaling uh, of services, both in new developments as well as in the existing areas. In this case, as Emma said, there are quite a lot of people using 
the culture and cars that are not, but they are not living in the house. They are living in the neighborhood and they um, have good use of these new cars. And as I said before, stay open to further development and innovation. This transition has only begun. Yeah. So I will just very briefly introduce the second demonstrator on campus, Johanneberg. Uh, this will be, here you can see a, a photo of, of the campus area. And the plan is to introduce four different mobility hubs uh, around the area. Uh, and this pilot is uh, directed for business travel. And we expect to have between 300 and 500 users. So there will be local hubs of shared uh, e-bikes. There will be car sharing with another car sharing operator move about, which is already in the area. There will be public transport. Then we will add on uh, the citywide bike sharing schemes, taxi. Uh, and one of the main parts in this project is that we will uh, provide a system for easy invoicing so that it will be easy for the, all the employers in the area to let their employees use these services and then uh, the employer will pay for it uh, in an easy way. And this pilot will be implemented from September, we hope. It should have been uh, uh, implemented already from May this year, but due to the current situation we have had to postpone it. Uh, and this will be a collaboration between many different actors on campus, mainly the property owners uh, on the campus area, but also uh, the employers. And we have a good collaboration also with researchers from Chalmers Technical University who will follow this, uh, this demonstrator and uh, do research on it, which is very interesting, I think. Uh, but the aim of this demonstrator will be to prepare for uh, a common procurement of a commercial mass concept at the campus. So it's not, we will demonstrate the easy to be com uh, concept to make everyone aware of what this kind of service can be. But we also hope that uh, the property owners and employers in the area will be able to learn during this pilot uh, to be able to know if, if they want to procure a common service for the area, which would create a lot of value, what are the, uh, what kind of service <laughs> would, should they require and what are the important parameters when procuring such a service? Uh, so it will be learning on many different levels, we hope. Uh, and if you are interested in this pilot uh, and require more details, you should contact our colleague Rasmus Sundberg, uh, who is a colleague at TriVector, who will be a project leader of this, uh, of this demonstrator too. Uh, this was what we had prepared for presentation. So now we are open to all your questions and answers. And I think that panels will uh, help moderating that session. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Emma and Bjorn. Uh, participants are free to ask, <laughs> to ask questions. Uh, you can also use uh, the chat functionality to send your question. If, if I may ask one question. Go ahead. Yes, Edward. Thank you. As I have seen, there's been a lot of activities regarding to the increasing of the awareness of the people, like uh, private meetings and uh, discussions and so on. My question is, how many people have been involved in this activity and how many time they spent on it? Because the municipality usually has a limited number of people. And if we are talking about, let's say, 10 buildings, where there are like 1,000 inhabitants or maybe more, that means that we need 
many people and a lot of time to have these discussions. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you for the, your question. Uh, we can say that around 50% of the households and uh, participate in some kind of, of uh, interaction with us with some kind of communication activity. Uh, and, and in this case, the municipality is not, uh, is not responsible for this communication. It is the real estate de developer. And really, the real estate developer organizes this and pay for it. And in this case, they used us to do that. So the municipality is, is not that involved in this communication. They, they can require this and they can be part if they want, but they are not responsible. All right, thank you. I think there is a question on from uh, Anna. How do you see that the corona situation affects mass and people's interest in sharing transportation? <laughs> uh, of course, the interest in, in using public transport is lower now than normally. Uh, on the other hand, maybe using um, commuting by bike <laughs> will probably become more popular. But I think it's very diff difficult to say anything about it yet. I, I saw at least one car sharing company ask their customers to be more aware about how they use the car and use, uh, what you say, uh, specific, uh, disinfection. Yes, they put that in the cars so that you, the users can use that on the steering wheel and so. So, but I, I, I'm not sure. I don't really know. Uh, I hope that this corona situation will not be forever <laughs> and then maybe we will come back to, to a no, more normal situation. Who is supposed to pay? Uh, it's another question in the chat. Well, in the beginning the, the real estate developer is paying quite a lot, but they also gain a lot through this situation that they don't have to provide that many car parking lots. And in Gothenburg, normally that is a garage car parking that is really, really expensive. So it's like a, a win-win situation. They will save a lot of money on car parking and instead pay, use a bit of that money to, to provide this kind of mobility services. But over time, uh, our income from the users, the users when they use the, the public transport or car sharing is, is, uh, is the way that, that they will pay over time. And yeah, then there is some experience from uh, the Netherlands that car sharing companies have increased the frequency with which they clean the cars. Uh, but it may indeed cause a backlash. Yes, I'm, I'm sure it will. But not so for electric bikes. Uh, I completely agree with you. Uh, public transport dropped about 75% in the Netherlands. Uh, then Maritz has a question. How did you dimension the amount of e-cars and bikes for Viva? How did you end up with the number now in use? Four cars for about 140 apartments seems few. Uh, also, the amount of bikes seems low. How did you calculate this? Well, that's a, a really good question. Uh, talking about the, the car sharing cars, there is like a, you say, a thumb, uh, thumb, rule. thumb rule in Sweden that is suitable with one car sharing car per 50 apartments. So, in this case, it should be around, in, in the normal situation, three cars. Now it's four. But it's also due to the situation that this is a car-free housing. There is no, no private cars at all. So, so therefore, it, it's, uh, yeah, at least so far, it, it's used for, for four cars. But the, the, we have also learned, and that's not 
uh, maybe a totally new knowledge that uh, if you if you go for a, from a situation when you have a private car to use car sharing instead you don't only become a, a car sharing uh, customer you will most probably also use car rental more you will most probably also use public transport more and you will bike more so you will be more like a, a, a mobilist we sometimes say in Sweden and, and uh, the, the car sharing cars are mostly used for quite short trips inside the city so when you go outside city many of these uh, users will instead use car rental or another type of car sharing uh, that are available also the amount of bikes yeah uh, I, I would say that many people most people in viva they also have their private bikes so that this um, uh, bike uh, sharing pool is um, like something extra, an extra it's feature. A complement. A complement, yes. Private bikes. But uh, when it comes to the number of vehicles, we also, uh, as not all people move in at the same time, we have also gradually increased uh, the number of vehicles uh, and, of course, kept an eye on how much they are used. Uh, so, should it be a situation where all the bikes are used all the time, it would be possible to add more bikes, perhaps. Yeah. E handle. Well, e commerce. Yeah. We have also learned that uh, talking about the cargo bikes, for example, they thought maybe that there will be more use of the car cargo bikes, go uh, shopping and so for groceries and other stuff. But we have learned that many people live in this in this house. They use e-commerce and they buy groceries on internet and get it um, delivered. delivered to the house and don't need to provide their own. Uh, uh, transport capacity for for that kind of goods. Yeah. And what we also learned from, from um, the questionnaires that we sent out is that also the people that still have kept their own car they use it far less than they did before because it's uh, it's less convenient to use the car. So if they have a couple of errands that they need to do, they combine all of them in one trip instead of going for three, four different trips for all the different errands. Uh, and I assume that the same holds for the people using uh, the shared cars. Uh, then Ulrika has a question. How do you solve uh, the potential problem of Viva tenants having cars but parking them in the neighborhood instead of right by the Viva building? Do you know how many percent that, that does this? I think we have like about 30 privately owned cars in, the, in, the, in this uh, Viva house right now and some of the, these cars are parked in a neighborhood around it and that's not uh, not what we want but uh, that is the situation right now but we have also found out that it is possible for them to rent a monthly ticket on car parking quite cheap from the city of Gothenburg so we will also need some more uh, support on, and uh, maybe legislation from the public uh, to have uh, even less cars. And, but, and they also think, on the other hand, that some people will sell the cars over time. That haven't happened yet, but that will happen in the future because it's quite a tricky situation to have the car uh, like a kilometer away or so. Alana is asking, could this new business model be a threat for car manufacturers in, in Europe? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Let's hope Let's for hope, the future. Yeah. But the situation is also that many car manufacturers or car brands are now developing different kind of uh, leasing and uh, more like rental uh, models for cars where you don't own your own car. So I think this will happen one way or the other anyway. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Lots of uh, do you have a short report on the results of the survey? No, we don't have yet. Uh, there is uh, uh, a deliverable in the IRIS project where we have described uh, the activities performed so far, but that was written before we had all the results from the survey. Uh, but there will be later on in the project, of course. Uh, do you have other materials related to the market research? And could you share that in the project? Mm. Uh, may I say something, Emma? Uh, Mark Sanders yeah. is from University of Utrecht. He works on uh, business modeling in the IRIS project. So ah, okay. I suppose that you can uh, contact him directly and uh, discuss about this and provide him information because it's needed for, a, for yeah. the project. It yeah, would be useful, yeah. Uh, right. Edward, okay. Uh, Edward has a question. Did you estimate how much money a family can save if it's not owning a personal car, but uh, using alternative mobility? Yes, we did that. We we actually constructed a, um, a model in just as an Excel file where you could fill out, uh, fill in how much you were using your car, what it was worth, how old it was, and so on. Uh, and compare that with a situation where you would, would get rid of the car and start using shared services instead. Uh, and we had that, um, we used that material for the personal mobility uh, coaching sessions. Uh, but we didn't find it as useful as we thought, as we, thought we would. Uh, and I think an interesting result from the service sent out was also that people uh, there, there was a share of the of the uh, of the people answering the, the questionnaire now that said that they were they were thinking about maybe selling their car. They hadn't decided to do it, but they were thinking about it. Uh, and then we asked, what are the reasons for you uh, thinking about maybe selling your cars? Uh, and it, it was just um, a very small uh, percentage that said that money was the main reason for this. It was mainly, the main reason was that it was so inconvenient not being able to park uh, nearby. Uh, so they didn't, they didn't, uh, having a car didn't create as much value anymore when you couldn't use it as conveniently. Uh, but of course this will be very different in, dif in different contexts I think. People moving into Viva are, in general, rather wealthy. Uh, their apartments are quite expensive. Uh, so I think uh, economy is less of a, an issue for them than for some other uh, people in other contexts. Uh, Helene is asking, who, who owns the initiative of doing hubs in Johannesburg? Is it a city in initiative and what role has the city in the demo and in the procurement and who is paying the process to get this in place? Uh, it, no, the city is not involved in the process. Uh, the city has been involved in uh, creating a green travel plan, is that the word they use, uh, for the uh, Johannesburg campus area. Uh, but in this process, um, well, the initiative comes from the IRIS project, uh, but uh, we have also uh, attracted some uh, additional fu funding from the Swedish Energy Agency to involve more partners in this project. Uh, so now we're collaborating with mainly uh, the technical, uh, Chalmers Technical University, uh, Akademiska Haus, uh, his, <laughs> uh, the, the property owner that the university is renting from, uh, and also Chalmers Fastigheter, which is the other property developer uh, that the university is hiring from. Uh, so they do this together uh, and also together with us at Privector. Right now, this, this is project a lot about learning, learning about these kind of services and how to set up these kind of uh, hubs and so. But in the long term goal is to, to reach the requirements from the city uh, to have the possibility to, to build more um, buildings and more work in, add more work in workplaces to the area. They are not allowed to do that if, if they don't also work um, 
with the people going to the area and how they commute them. So it has to be less cars and uh, more of the other other services. Yes. Uh, Maurits has a question. Was e-commerce and increased use of delivery services taken into account? If affecting need of mobility, maybe services regarding this in building as part of the package in the future. Uh, for example, cold boxes where deliverables, deliveries can be left. Mm -hmm. the, not fully, I would say. There were, to some extent, um, prepared for. For example, there are delivery boxes, but not cold boxes. Uh, but so far it has been difficult to have the delivery companies to, to deliver it, uh, goods to these boxes. So that, as far as I know, that is not in place so far. Another challenge or problem that were, we have been seeing there at the, at the uh, uh, area close to the house is that there is not enough or a very well designed um, lots for these kind of uh, vehicles coming there and delivering the goods. So if we do Viva another, another project, I think you will think more about how to design um, the possibilities to, to deliver goods and groceries. I think that is a general conclusion that uh, when e-commerce is growing so much, uh, goods deliveries and, and personal mobility become much more integrated and, and can substitute for each other. Yeah, and we are also discussing if it could be possible to, to make these kind of de deliveries more efficient. For example, that there will be a coordination of uh, deliveries that's not the normal situation today in Sweden, at least, because they go to one neighbor um, at one time and to the other neighbor 10 minutes later, and it's not coordinated. Yeah. And there will be a lot of traffic. Arno is asking, how do you plan to scale up? Yeah, good question. Uh, now we are, we are replicate, as I said, we are doing a similar project in Lund in another city, but in that area we are also trying to get on board other real estate developers in the same area. So that could be one way to scale it up, to, to, to make different real estate developers to, to invest in one um, common pool or one common is to be mobility service. In another area, we are trying to get um, use this new building and the new mobility service as a way to also attract pe other people living in the neighborhood in existing buildings to start using the service. Um, we will try both these ways. Yeah, Maurits is asking advice on how to replicate this solution in the fellow cities. <laughs> <laughs> well, Emma told you about the flexible parking norms. They have been very important for us. That's an important part of the business model. So I can't really tell how, how the situation is in the other countries and cities that could be possible to do it in totally the same way. Uh, on the other hand, I think that, or we think that when we try to, to move uh, the situation to something they called sometimes the new normal, the normal, that the normal is to, to be a customer to mobility services instead of owning your own car. As we have seen in other um, areas of the society, for example, uh, when you're streaming uh, videos and uh, music and so, and you're stopped by your own and own your own uh, CDs and so. We are, still have a long way to go in the transport sector, but I think we're going in that direction. Yeah. But I think what we also learned is that 
to provide a service like this requires a lot of collaboration between different actors that are not used to collaborating. Mm. Uh, and I think uh, as a public actor, you, uh, I think public actors have a very important role to provide or create good circumstances for other actors to collaborate. Uh, both in require, requiring or putting up reasonable de demands on the new services, but also, uh, for example, many public transport agencies uh, have, are quite uh, reluctant to collaborating with other with private actors uh, like us, uh, and as a uh, that could be one role uh, for public actors <laughs> to, to also uh, require the public transport agencies to collaborate uh, with private companies uh, in cases where, where you see that that could create value uh, and uh, contribute to a sustainability transition. Uh, Patty has a question. Do you have material that can be presented to property developers so that they can think about replication. How do you see use of app by others? How much would that cost to a developer housing unit, etc.? cetera? Um, Maybe we could um, have a uh, separate contact about that, but uh, uh, we have some material we can, we can send you, but I can also say that this, um, technical development with the app and that kind of things. It's very much dependent on the local conditions and circumstances. And it is uh, expensive to add new services. For example, uh, another, another public transport authority, there are no standards, not e even in Sweden, uh, that are really in place. So it, it depends on uh, on the local uh, situation where a lot. Uh, but do send us an email, Patty, and we can continue the discussion. Uh, Andre is asking, as I understand it, Riksbygden is providing you with their own contract and mobility service provider, Sunfleet, etc. In the business model, how does that work with the kickback model? And also at a potential scale up with different customers who all have their own contracts with mobility service providers. Would you rather work like that or with your own contracted mobility service providers? Uh, good question. <laughs> we are still in a very early phase. So to be honest, I'm not really sure. Uh, we are quite pragmatic. So in this case, Ritzbygen, yes, they were providing us with, uh, uh, and they have a contract with the uh, car sharing company Sunfleet, and we added it on the service. Uh, in another situation, in our, in our next project, most probably we will have that contract. Uh, I'm not really sure uh, where it will end, end up, what will be the, the norm situation or the standard model so far. We are testing different solutions. Uh, but of course, it, it if when it comes to, to, to money and a kickback model, it will be easier for us if we have the contract with the mobility service providers. Lots of questions, that's fun. Uh, Helene, follow up on last question. How much of the cost for the services are covered by the funding by the companies or and by the users? Well, uh, in this case, I would say that also the Iris project is a big sponsor uh, and it could uh, and um, made this possible. Um, it, this will depend also about on what uh, the requirements for the, from the, the municipality. But uh, as I said before, in the in the beginning, in the implementation phase, uh, the real estate developer is paying for paying the most of it, and also 
and only a very small part is paid by the users. But it could, we could also arrange this in a little bit different uh, way. For example, the, the, bicycle, the bicycle pool, uh, they can use them for free now. It is possible to, to take a fee for the use and then uh, the users will pay more directly for the for the bicycles instead of the what do you say am a housing uh, association yeah yeah BRFB, like the housing association they will pay most of the service today but maybe that will change in the future Okay, that doesn't seem to be any questions. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> nice. Is there any other question? I, I have one short question. Uh, I was thinking of writing it, but I didn't have time. <laughs> I think it's quicker to ask. Yeah. I was quickly calculating uh, the cost that the developer is uh, now saving by this if I just quickly roughly calculated at about 70 parking spaces and about uh, the cost for one of those so it's almost 2 million euros that uh, they seem to uh, save by not being building parking spaces or something in that direction uh, so how much cheaper I, I guess this uh, solution is way, way you know, very much cheaper for them but uh, how does that calculate into the business model that they seem to save a lot of money, but uh, they can then uh, substitute then these parking spaces with this solution instead? Is there any, I don't know, I mean, just from uh, maybe municipalities point of view that they see uh, well, not, not obliging them to build these parking spaces? Well. I, I'm not fully aware about Rick's figures business model in this. Uh, uh, I think they will save some money, of course, but they have also invested quite a lot in the in the infrastructure, in this uh, bicycle garage that are quite fancy and that's uh, quite expensive. So uh, I don't I don't think that this project have been that very much cheaper than a, a normal project. Uh, I also have heard from other municipalities in Sweden that they, they want to see that most of the money you save on car parking, you have to invest that in the um, infrastructure for sustainable mobility and in the mobility services. But of course, there must be, there must be some, something to gain and to save money. But, um, you could also look in, at, into it into a, maybe a longer perspective. If we will have a situation in a, a decade or two when we have a, a lot more of a, autonomous cars and maybe not uh, have the lifestyle where you own your own car, at least in Sweden there will be a lot of car parking that will not be used, but you still have to pay for it in some way or the other. So it could be a good investment to do this today and to not be that car dependent. Okay, no further questions? Yes. So you, we can close uh, the session. Thank you very much. Uh, the webinar will be available on the IRIS website, it's irissmartcities.eu, in the next days. And uh, our partners can further collaborate and exchange information by email. Yes, 
Uh, and our contact details are in the presentation, so you can find them there. Thank you for all the interesting questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.